you know, uh, we need to realize that we are God's created beings. We need to realize that. So many people makes no has no vision for their future. They live from day to day just whatever. And I know we like to say one day at a time. And what if God had just done that in the beginning, one day at a time? But God didn't do that. God set everything in motion. And God knew the end before the beginning. <laughs> now, I don't know where you are today, but I love how I heard a, a preacher put it. It's time to stop looking that rearview mirror. You can't drive forward basically what based on what you're looking you're seeing in the rearview mirror. You're gonna end up some in the ditch somewhere. You gotta look through the windshield, right? You gotta look through the window in front of you. You gotta go forward. Sometimes you gotta even look up ahead to see the light is turning red and get start preparing to stop. Amen. Because if you're looking in the rearview mirror and you're breaking because somebody's coming up so fast behind you, you're like, oh, my gosh, I got to get over. Guess what's going to happen? Something bad is going to happen. You can't drive forward based on what you're seeing in behind you. So we got to have a vision. We got to have a vision for our future. Stop looking. Start planning. Stop planning your future based on your past. Stop living today because of something that happened yesterday or two days ago or 10 years ago. Amen. We got to start living based on what we're believing for the future. We ought to start seeing December right now. What are we going to be December corporately? We got to start seeing what are we going to be in December as a family unit in your own home. We ought to start seeing that individually. Where are you going to be at the end of this year as a person? What are you, what, what are you hoping to achieve this year? And I know some people like to set unrealistic goals and, 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 and set some crazy vision. And yes, God is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all. But sometimes we just need to, to, to set ourselves in motion so God can do it. God wants to do exceedingly abundantly above in our personal life. Well, sometimes in the dry season, we got to plow and prepare for rain. Amen. What if all the farmers out where we live right now, boy, the tractors are fired up. They're plowing like crazy. Right? Because it's dry. You can't plow when it's raining, when it's wet. That dirt won't pl that dirt won't turn over good. Right? You got to plow when it's dusty, right? When that dirt is so dry, that plow can get deep, right? Bit of Louie that plow can get deep when it's dry, right? When it's wet, it just slush stuff around. And as soon as it gets dry, it's just like hard, like a pudding. But we don't want that, right? We want to be open up so God can sow things deep in us. And what better time? Maybe you're, you're feeling, maybe I'm talking to somebody this morning. I'm just not feeling the Lord right now. Guess what? Dig in. If I should prophesy this morning, this is what I heard God saying. Maybe it's for you. Maybe it's for me. Maybe it's for all of us. But God's saying, come closer. God is saying, come closer. He wants all of us to begin in to push, push past what you're feeling, push past what you're seeing, push past what's holding you back. Push past it. Don't let it dictate to you. Don't let it hold you back. 
God is saying, come closer to me. I'm telling you, if I should prophesy today, that's what God has been saying to me now for weeks and weeks. He's just calling me, come closer to me. And I believe he's calling us as a body corporately, come closer to me. How do you do that? Well, for me, it's fasting. For me, it's praying. For me, it's, yes, one-on-one. -on -one. But also, as a, as a group, I don't want to miss church. I want to be here because, to me, coming corporately helps me get closer to the Lord. It is so important to join up with your brothers and sisters corporately to push together. And I know it's important to do it individually, and you got to do it at home. But I'm telling you, joining with the body is so important. I'm preaching to the choir because we're all here, right? But it's so important for us to be here. You are so important here right now. You don't realize the, just the, the blessing it, I feel just to be able to be a part of this group right now. People that are prayer people, people that will war over me if something bad should happen to me right now. There are people here that will come and lay down on me and just weep and pray. How amazing that is to be in a group like this, a group that if God begins to speak to you this morning and tell you something to tell me, to guide me, to direct me, that you're going to tell me. You're not going to be some of those Facebook evangelists, right? Boy, they're crazy, Papa. Facebook started doing a live thing, and there's evangelists all over the woodwork. Everybody's using this as their church right now. And somebody just made a video and says, okay, so somebody who is a Facebook prophetist decided to pers like do the private message thing and send him a message that thus set the Lord. And he had one back for that person because he's like, you know what? Me and God, we have no malice. We've been talking. If God has something to tell me, surely he can tell me. Why would he need to come tell you to tell me? Now, I'm not saying, this is his video. I'm not saying I have no sin because if the Bible says, if I said that, then I'm lying. But surely God would tell me. You see, if he was in a body with that person and God was speaking in a corporate setting, that's a whole different thing. But when you... When you just see somebody that's on your Facebook page and you're just going to randomly send them because God says, and that person, who knows where they're going through? They might not receive it because they don't know you. I don't know you. And if God is giving you direction for my life, I might think twice about following it, especially if I feel like I have a, a close relationship with the Lord. He got to give me that inkling before he come tell you so he can confirm it, right? But in a body, I, I'm going to trust Pastor Cliff. Even if God has not talked to me yet about something, I'm going to trust the men of God. That God talked to him, he's going to show me something later. But right now, he's telling him, and I can bet you if God told Pastor something and, and Pastor talked to me personally or corporately, I better listen because it's, gonna, it's coming. And that's what a corporate setting is. That's why it's so important to be a part of a church. And the disciples in Jesus' day show that. Jesus showed that. Jesus never strayed far from the, the congregation. Amen? It's so important. Set vision for your future. Look three months from now where you see yourself in the word. Maybe your vision for your future is just to read the Bible. You know, I've always said I'm going to read the Bible, but... Right now, I'm setting it. I'm going to read my Bible. You know, three chapters a day, five on Sunday. You get through the whole Bible in one year. Right? You get through the whole Bible in one year. Man, how important is that? We had a set vision for our future. Humanistically, when you, I heard a story about, uh, they do a, re a, a research study at a, at a rest, rest home for our older generation. And they go in there and ask them, what would you tell young people, you know, what advice would you give to young people that are coming up, you know, about their future? And they're saying, you know, overwhelmingly, 
The answer was, do what makes you happy. Do what makes you happy. And, you know, yeah, as Americans, we even have that in our Declaration of Independence, right? With pursuit of happiness. Everybody wants to be happy. But when you look at that word happy, that's just happenings, right? There is something beyond that that is even greater than being happy. It's being fulfilled. And we are full. when you're fulfilled, you don't depend on the moment to feel a, a certain euphoria or a certain um, your mind to be open in a certain high, <laughs> whatever that dopamine you get from being happy, right? People want to feel happy. You, you can get addicted to that and you do whatever it takes to do that. Some people, it, 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 it's doing illicit drugs and and different things that make you feel good, right? Some people, it's even going to certain churches and they make you feel good, right? The song, oh, the, the song that they sing, it just, woo, this make me chicken walk, right? It, it could be many things, right? Whatever float your boat is a better way to put it, like, right? but we don't want to stuck in that, right? If you're fulfilled, you don't wait for that moment. And being fulfilled is in God. And we're talking about setting a, a, a vision for your future. And I want to tell you this morning that if you're going to set a vision, you got to go back to the one that has the dream. And God has a dream for us. Amen. In Genesis chapter 1 and verse 26, I'm reading in the NIV or the New International Reader's Version, and it says this. He says, then God said, let us make man in our likeness, right? Let them rule over the fish in the waters, in the birds of the air. Let them rule over the livestock and over all the, ho the whole earth. Let them rule over all the, crea the creatures that move along the ground. So God created man in his own likeness. He created him in the likeness of God, he create them as male and as female. God blessed them. He said to them, have children and increase your numbers. Fulfill, fulfill the earth and bring it under your control. Rule over the fish in the waters and the birds of the air. Rule over every living creature that move on the ground. God has something that he has planned here. When we join into the vision of God, our vision can be more clearer. What we see us ourselves, where we see ourselves at the end of 2017, ultimately should be where God sees us. The vision that you need to have for your future is that, Lord, my vision is I want to be under your subjection. I want to take myself away from selfishness. I want to divorce the idea of selfish ambition, right? And I want you. I want to say yes to your will. Yes to your ways. Yes to you, God. Amen? So many of us, we don't say yes to God. We say maybe, if it fits my narrative, if it makes me look good. But I love that scripture that says we need to keep our eyes on him. We see that when, you know, some people criticize Peter. Peter was the one that steps out of the boat. With all what was going on, Peter says, Lord, bid me to come. And Jesus said, come, and he steps out on that water. Yes, he sung for a little bit and he reached out. But there's a sermon in that. That even sometimes when we stepped out in the rough and we may be sinking, Jesus is always going to be there to save us. The point is some people may criticize him, but they're the one that's sitting down in the boat. They never get to walk on water. 
What is the vision for our life? We got to step out. What is God calling us to do? It may look dangerous. It may sound scary around you, but we got to step out of that boat. We got to get into the line in line with the vision that God has for us. He created us in his likeness. He created us to be like him. And I tell you what, God ain't sitting in no boat. He's out there walking on the water. Amen. And we got to be about the, our father's business. In 2017, we got to be about our father's business. We got to shake off this, this worldly vision that, that, that American media has for us. That Hollywood has for us, right? You know they're all liars anyway. How many of them come out and buy, I'm moving if Donald Trump win election? They ain't moving. They're just whiners and big babies. Don't let those people set your course. Jesus is the one that needs to set our course. Jesus needs to be the one up on the captain's bridge. Jesus needs to be the one in the pilot seat. Jesus ain't no co-pilot. He is the leader, he is the king of kings, and the Lord of lords he is the alpha and the omega. He is the one that set our course, and he's the one that we're going to follow. He's the one that's the wind in our sail. Come on, somebody. Amen. You're preaching good, Phyllis. Amen. <clears throat> mm. so he's our leader so ask yourself where do we see God this the end of this year I want to be right there with him we're going to join ourselves we're going to marry ourselves with him let's come together with God don't go based on what you're seeing with your physical eyes. I love it. Jeremiah chapter 1, same translation. Jeremiah chapter 1 and verse 5. He says, before I formed you in your mother's body, I chose you. Did you hear that? Before. Before. I formed you in your mother's belly. I chose you before you, you were born. I set you apart to serve me. I appointed you to be a prophet to the nation. Turn to your neighbor and says, you're appointed. Say, you're appointed. We are all appointed to do the will of God. God has, has given each and every one of us a vision and a purpose and a dream to do something amazing for him. And we got to get on board. We got to do it. The ministry of the Lord is lacking. Jesus says the harvest field is ripe, but the laborers are few. The laborers are few. Can't let that happen. The Bible says to, to, to wait on the Lord, to, to, to not be weary and well-doing. Amen? Whew. Man. Don't just rely on being happy. Don't go out and just do what makes you feel good. Somewhere along the line, we think, you know, you hear so many people said, the, 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 it's not, you know, you ever hear your kid says, that's not fair. <laughs> it's like, sometimes we want to whine to the Lord and says, but that's not fair. Like, he killed somebody. He should not have been able to get saved, right? And God has been talking to me about it. I'm like, do you know he blessed people that is not even Christian? I'm like, what's up with that? They're Christian people that don't look so blessed. 
But there are people that are not even, don't even think about him. And yet they're blessed financially even. And you're like, what? See, you can't go there because he knows the end from the beginning. The Bible even says that he laid up the wealth of the wicked for the just. If you are just, if you are a person that live after faith, the Bible says the just shall live by faith. We're not life. We don't go by what circumstance dictate. We don't go by what we see. We don't go by what other people have. I'm not serving God no more. I'm this person got blessed and I ain't blessed like that person. What are they having? Look what I have. And I'm the one over here serving the Lord. You remember the prodigal son story? The Lord, the, the father, the dad celebrate when the sinner came home. And the one that's been home all along get mad about it. We can't be that brother. We got to be. We got to be the ones that the, the, the servants that join into the party. So some people miss that. This all the servants. No servants complain. The, the, the father says, go kill a father. They go kill a calf. He said, come on, we're having a party. All the servants were having a party. The brother got vexed. He got his heart out of whack. Let's not be that guy. Let's be like the servants. Oh, somebody got came home. Daddy's having a party. We're coming in with him. Amen. We're going to celebrate. We don't di dictate by who gets blessed. Listen. If you want to be happy, like the world says happy is. Survey says the people that are most happy in the world are the people that serve others the most. So if you want it in a humanistic way, not even in a God way, just the law of happiness is serving, is serving others. <laughs> Isn't that something? It's setting place. If you want to tap into something that God set in place, it's a, this is literally like the law of physics. This is how it's set up. If you want to be happy, serve others. Selfish, selflessly. And God will bring you in a place of euphoria. Boom. I use it in a sentence. Ha <laughs> ha. <laughs> God wants to bless us, guys. We want, God wants us to live in a place that, 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 that fulfill our hearts. If you want to be fulfilled, if you, if you find yourself close to depression, the thing to walk away from that is, is to run closer to the Lord. But not only that, but it's to serve others. Jesus says, you know, <clears throat> the greatest one, the one that is greater among you is the one that is serving. Jesus even show an example by gird himself with a, a, a apron and get down on his knees and wash his disciples' feet. The examples of that wasn't that he felt that their foot need washing. He wanted to show, yeah, they probably did. He wanted to show them that the, that the heart of the matter is that you serve others even in the lowest way possible. That you don't, your, your, your ego is not set based on your status. And, and, and that's one of the, 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 the reason why I'm, I'm not a big celebrity fan. Don't ask me their names. I don't know who they are. Uh, my wife laughs all the time. I know like one female name, right? Sandra Bullock. And like, who, who is that, honey? That's Sandra. I'm like, no, honey, that's not her. <laughs> Right. It, it, I'm, it's weird. I don't keep up with them. I mean, I know a few of their names, but some people like all the singers, like they, all these pop star. Right. I have no clue who they are. Right. right? Somebody's like, dude, you have you have uh, so and so in your playlist. I'm like, I don't know who that is. And they're like, dude, that's not a good song. I'm like, OK, take it out. I don't know how we got there. Because I don't know who they are. So you don't even know who's bad and good. And somehow it ended up because you 
you know, you stream music. Sometimes they ended up in your stream thing. But I don't know who they are. Right? I know the names from through the news and stuff, but I don't know who they are. But some people live their life based on how these people are saying that life should be. I happen to, 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 the one that's freshest in my mind is, uh, Kanye? Kanye. Dude is an idiot. Like, literally, this is the funny thing about it, though. If I'm picking it up right, maybe Sasha, you're younger generation. Maybe you can help me. But he's an idiot. Everybody knows he's an idiot, and that's what makes him popular. Like, he will just pop off and say the stupidest thing at the wrong time, and everybody would just love him for it. Like, he said it, right? They have him giving an award, right? He's the host that's handing out awards. They give the, uh, uh, an award for singing to this girl. He says, yeah, you got it, but the better singer, though, is this girl over here. <laughs> like, dude, you can't say that with the mic, Right? But that's what makes him money. He just, this uncharacteristic person that doesn't have a clue about anything. And people pay him for it. And you want to let that person tell you how to live? No. Come on, guys, listen. Our vision for the future needs to be totally wrapped up in who Jesus is. Let Jesus guide us. Let Jesus sustain us. Let Jesus be who we want to be like. Jesus need to be the person that we were totally cocooning, right? Like a butterfly ready to come out, right? It needs to be wrapped up totally in who Jesus is. So when people see us, we won't even have to say anything. They feel like Jesus just walked by. They feel like Jesus just walk in the room. Right? And we won't even have to begin to speak. But even when we speak, they should know it. People shouldn't hear you say something and just sense, well, I don't really know you, but that just doesn't feel right coming out of your mouth. Right? That if we're Christians, we need to speak positive. We need to speak glory. We need to speak life. Amen? You speak death to the devil and life to God's creation. Amen? Amen? You rebuke the devil, but you speak life to God's creation. Amen? See, we don't, God never says in Genesis 26 that they will worship create the create the, the, the create the things that he create. You don't worship creation. You worship creator. Amen. And so we got to set ourselves apart. And we got to say, God, my vision for 2017 is to be more like you. To be more like you, to be more in you, to set apart, to be set apart for you. So many people live in fear and worry and hurt and depression. And all these emotions drive them. I mean, you get on Facebook again is where people are these days. And, and, and you see these people and they're telling you how they love their job because nobody at their job offend them that day. But then on the next post, somebody made them mad, even a supervisor, a boss, and, and they're mad. And they're like, I'm going to need to find a new job. And it's not that their job is not paying them well or it's not working. It's somebody made them mad. You can't live like that. That means you have no vision for your future. Somebody come in, the, in our church and make you mad and you leave. You don't have a vision for your future. Listen, you can't just make decision 
because somebody changed your emotion. You should be fulfilled in Jesus. You should be planted in the Lord, and he is the one that changed your mind. He is the one that makes makes you think and and if God wants you to make a decision he don't wait till you're hurt he doesn't send people say go hurt that little girl so she can make a decision to leave no he's gonna speak to you and when you leave you're gonna leave going up not leave you know so many people leave here and I know I know that if they'd stay here they would have been in in ministry that God would have been using them and and, and the, 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 the kingdom of God would have been being blessed, but they leave here and, and now they're not doing nothing other than maybe going to church. Right. And I'm not saying they don't love the Lord, but they're not letting the Lord lead them. We can't we 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 can't afford that. We, we can't afford to be in that place. I, 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 people leave for to move to a ministry that's that that that's flocking with thousands of people and hundreds of people are going there and you just want to go be in that crowd. We, we God didn't call us to be a part of the crowd. He called us to lead. He called us to do things. Come on, if you're in our church and you're not active in a ministry yet, you're hiding. We need to find you. There are so many ministry that are just overloaded with the same people that are doing other things. And the only reason why that is, is because these things, there's so many things that need to get done. So what you need to do, I mean, I, I saw a vehicle stall the other day, just kaput right in the center, in the middle lane. And it got, you can't leave it there. So they got to get it out. Well, everybody just kind of drive around it but here comes somebody and they stopped get out of their vehicle and start pushing the guy and then somebody else come up and start pushing the guy well you know the more people start pushing the easier the car was to to move out of the way so everybody else can then go on their way but as long as that car was there the traffic was hampered I want to say I don't know if I'm using that word right Traffic was hampered. They weren't going right. Oh, oh, this is, a, you know, everybody's braking. But as soon as that car got out of the way, the road was clear. Come on, if you're here, fine, ask somebody, what can I do? Maybe you don't see it. You feel like, I don't have time. Oh. Let me tell you a story about what pastor used this story. I don't know if I can say it right. There's a girl. She's going to university of um, Oral Roberts University in Tulsa. It was back in the day when Oral Roberts would walk across campus to go to the prayer room and all that. And, and this girl saw him, and she was distraught. And she said, sir, I was like, I, I, I can't, I'm, I'm, I don't know if I'm going to make it. She, she's thinking she's going to drop out or something. She don't have enough time to finish her assignment and all the things that she needs to do. She's like, how, how can I do this? Give me some advice. And he says, you need to volunteer at the house of prayer. Well, they, they, they call in and you pray for people on the phone or take prayer requests. She said, but I, you don't understand. I don't have enough time to do anything. I, I, I'm, I'm at my wit's end. I'm going to break here. He says, go volunteer. A few weeks later, she come running to him. She said, I start volunteering. She has more time to do what she's doing, what she didn't have enough time. But now that she's given, get out of herself. Stop looking on herself. Now she's looking out. God's showing her. Now she's getting more done. Do you, are you, are you feel stuck? You start giving to the Lord. Financially, yes. But I'm just talking about physically, too. Get out of yourself. Ask, what can I do in my church? Maybe you can come once a month for one hour and do something. God will begin to do, use that for his glory. Come on, somebody. Your vision needs to be more than yourself. It needs to be corporate. It has to envelop the corporateness of God's church. And God's plant you here for a reason. 
find out how can I serve what God has placed me in. It needs to be for your family too, yes. You got to have a vision for your family. Where does God want you to be in a month, in two months? You know, reading my Bible, I, 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 I've always read my Bible, but something that was brought to my attention lately, I feel like God was just hammering me with this, is I don't read at home in front of the kids. They don't necessarily ever see me. It's just so noisy, you know, and they're doing what they're doing. I don't, I don't feel right reading in front of them. But I, I found out that I could be doing them a disservice by just reading when I get in my bed or just reading when I get my quiet time. They need to be physically seeing me open my physical Bible reading in front of them. So they can say, I, I remember my dad would be reading. They need to hear the paper page turning, not my light on my phone. Well, I'm just saying, even if they're just playing, I'm just reading for myself. They need to be able to see that. That's one of the visions that I believe God has given me for this year. Now my kids need to be able to physically see me in the word. Open my physical Bible, the page, so little Eben can see me. I want him to have remem remember that when he grew up. And not just see me looking at my phone. He don't know what I'm doing. Looking at my phone. When he looks at my phone, he play games or watch videos and you know, and I'm on my phone. He don't realize I'm reading the word. I'm getting fed. Right? We got to do these young ones justice. Get a vision for your future. Come on, somebody. Let it be all about Jesus. Find out how can I incorporate Jesus in my workplace? How can I incorporate Jesus in, in, in my grocery shopping time? I, I, I start working with Pastor Paul now. We work in the same place. And the other day I was working and I didn't have a customer. And when we don't have a customer, the thing to do is to stand by the door to greet the next person that walk in. And I just, as I walk over, I realize I could hear myself out loud. I'm just praying in tongues. Oh, Rabbi <laughs> I just, I walk up to the door and I heard myself. And one of my coworkers walked by. I'm like, I'm sure they heard me. But I, 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 it's just something I do, right? Just, I ain't going to hide it. They sing what they sing and say dirty thing. I've even heard them cuss out loud. I speak in tongues out loud. Let's do this, right? You do what you do. I do what we do. We're all happy here, right? I, I, I'm not going to hide it. I speak in tongues, right? But that's how you can incorporate Jesus in your workplace. I got a good report yesterday. My boss called me and says, you only been on the floor for two weeks but your what you're doing is impressive and all I do is just show up <laughs> just show up and help people I just show up and help I don't even I don't half the time I don't know what I'm doing I'm I'm asking Paul and different people there and these guys are awesome by the way they they help me learn they don't just throw you off and but you know as, as you repeat it you don't have to ask them as much but if you find yourself in a bad spot, they're willing to come over and help. But, you know, I'm boss called you in the office to tell you, keep, keep doing, you're doing good. That's encouraging. That's very encouraging. Yeah. But we got to incorporate Jesus in everything that we do. Everything that we do. Incorporate the Lord in it. Bring Jesus in it. Discipline your child. Bring Jesus in it. No, not in the old line Pentecostal way to make them feel like God is beating them. They used to be like, you know, boy, the Bible said not to spear the rod. Now you're going to get it. <laughs> right? No. I mean, yeah, the Bible says that. But the kid now is thinking it's because of the Bible why I'm getting beat. Not because of what I did wrong. Now, what you do is, you, said, you, you, you give them the love of Jesus and you talk to them, you let them know how much God loves them. And, and, and God has been, because I love you, now I want you to, to be right. I have to guide you. God has put me in a position to be your leader. He's put me in a place to, 
to, to drive you and to lead you and to steer you into the right path. And, and to get in that, we have to make correction. Now, this is just a part of it. It's not the whole thing. This is just a part of it. And you do discipline, right? We don't beat them and say, God says. That, those days are done, man. <laughs> I mean, it was effective for me. Don't get me wrong. <laughs> it, 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 it worked for me, but I'm just saying, you know, there, there, there's other ways of interpreting the scriptures. <laughs> You get the same result. You do, and some people mess some people up because when they hear about God, you know, they get to doing this. Like, oh, God? Yeah. Oh. I want to finish. So don't make your decision based on fear or worry or stress. I want to bring this out. God is omnipotent. That means that he is all powerful. So when you set your vision for your future to incorporate God in what you are and who you are and what you're going to do, just remember, God is all powerful. Omni. There means all. Right? He is all powerful. That means there is no power that he doesn't have. Amen? He is, he is able to do anything and everything. Glory be to God. Amen? He's all-powerful. Yes. He is omniscient. That means he's all-knowing. He knows everything that is to be known. He has every knowledge that is to be had. I, I mean, I tell you guys time and time, I, I, I've ventured off and I'm not one of those people to say, I can't. I, I, I learned from, um, uh, is it Thomas Edison, the guy that created the light bulb? Well, he didn't really create it, but I mean, there's some other backstory there, but, but it, that guy... You know how many times he had to fail before he figured out how it worked? Nobody talks about the thousands of tried he tried. Thousands upon thousands. He had a vision, but he didn't know how it worked. So to find out the one way it worked, he had to learn the thousand way it didn't work. Isn't that something? And you're over here pout, pouting about how life just don't work for you. It worked. You just haven't found how yet. So for me, I just was never one of those people. If, if I've never done something before, I, I mean, it might cost more than if I would hire somebody. But after it's done, I'm going to know how it's done. That's the kind of person I am. I was sent out probably at the age of nine. I'm looking at Ezra, and I'm thinking, when I was Ezra's age, I was driving 27 heads of cattle down to the water hole, right? And we have to tie them up because we didn't have uh, enough land to have them caging, so we have to tie them up. And sometimes we go to tie them up in the field. There wasn't any trees to tie them onto. I mean, these are four or 500 pounds cow. They can pull anything out. But even at that young age, I learned how to tie a rope onto a, a, a strand of grass. A little strand of grass could hold 500 cow back. But you got to know how to do it. And I remember learning how and coming back. And then when you go to untie them from that grass and they're pulling against it because they're ready for water. You got to learn how to pull that rope. There's a lot of ways that it doesn't get done. It can't get done. But there's one way that it can get done. You can't go back and tell dad the cow is still tied up because I couldn't do it. You, there's no can't do it. You'd be sorry if you ever go before dad and says, he, the cow is still out in the field because I couldn't. No. 
Now you find out how to, right? And I remember sometime get in front of the cow and drive them backwards. So by the time they run back, I can get some slack in the road to get a, a little nudge, right? Then, then they pull again, you drive them back, and you just have to do what you have to do. You don't stop because it's hard. You don't stop because life is rough. You find a way to do it. You don't not pray because you don't have time. Come on, somebody. You don't not pray because you have to work long hours. Don't you're missing it. You can't afford not to pray. If you are not praying because work hours is long and and, 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 and you have to drive far and you have all it. No. Come on, incorporate prayer in that time. Wake up, that 15 minutes you're waiting for your coffee pot to brew. When you're making your cup of coffee, you know, Jesus is there with you. Put, find that place where you can just give him some one-on-one. Right? But don't just say, I can't. Come on, somebody. Let's have a vision for the future. Let's put God in it. Let's go and do what God says. He's all-powerful. He's all-knowing. And I love this. He's omnipresent. That means he's all present. He's everywhere all the time. So why are you worrying? Jesus says, listen, the birds, the birds that don't even worth nothing. They don't have to do nothing. And God provide for them. They don't have a barn. They don't store up. But they're, they're not going hungry. Do you not believe that God will take care of you also? He's all powerful. He's all knowing and he's all present. So when you call on him, when you call him Lord, when you say Lord, what you mean is he is sovereign. <laughs> when you say Lord, what you're saying is he is sovereign. He rules over everything. He rules over all powers. Jesus look at Pilate and he says, he don't even have the power except that which God gives you. They were saying, don't you know he can, he has the power to kill you or to let you live? And he's, he don't, he don't, he don't have nothing. Only what my father gave him permission to do, he can do. So God is all knowing. He's all powerful. So when you call him Lord, what you're saying, is he is sovereign. Listen, he's your healer and he's your healing. Come on, somebody. Say yes. Yes, he is. Hmm. Glory to God. He's your deliverer and he's your deliverance. Say yes. Yes, yes he is. Yes, is. Woo. Glory be to God. Mm. He is your savior and he is your salvation. Say yes. Yes, yes he is. Oh, Rabakashata. Mm. He is your life giver. The Bible says the devil come to steal, kill, and destroy, but he comes that you may have life and life more abundantly. He is your life giver. Say yes. Yes, yes he is. Yes, Glory be to God. Woo. I want to prophesy today. That there is a vision for our future. The vision is in the Lord. Nowhere else in the word does it say the walk with the Lord was going to be easy. As a matter of fact, Jesus says it's going to be a narrow way. Those that find it, it's narrow. Don't you know it takes more pressure to go down through the narrow things than the broad things? 
if a river has a lot of real estate to flow, it's going to be shallow because it's spread out. But when it's pushed up between the two mountain cliff, it's going to go faster and narrower. Why? Because it's been pressurized into a place. Listen, stress. I, I had to do some training at work, and, and, and they have a, a, a motivation speaker that came and talked. He said a lot of people that that they, they, they have all this this stuff that doctors talk about, right? They go to psychiatrists and they blame it all on stress, right? Divorce, right? Stress, right? Um, because of money problem and all this stuff, right? You you people are sick. You got liver disease because of stress. Cancer can be traced back sometimes because of stress. They got all these major things that can be traced back to stress, right? But this is his take on it. Stress can also be good. Do you know the military, when you go to train for, for certain divisions, even when you, you are already a military member and you want to train to go higher, guess how they get you ready? They put you to stress. So uh, tell me stress is not good. So what we need to do is when we have money problem and we can't see our way out, guess what we do? It's training time, baby. Come on. When, 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 when you need tires on your car, Josh, that was training time, right? Did you see God come through? Right? That was a, an opportunity for God to show off. Is a, a, what is it, Austin? What is the word? ostentatious yeah to show off right god needs moment to show off in our life so our lack aren't lack that we need to stress about and worry about and pout about and whine about it's opportunity god i love that that little old lady that 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 elijah got hooked up with in in the, in the old testament because when he asked her, she was kind to him. And, and he asked her, what do you want? And he prophesied and told her because he realized she didn't have a kid. Listen, he told her she's going to have a kid. She didn't ask for a kid. And then the kid, you know, stress comes because he died. After you get, no, no, we're not going to take this. This is not going to happen. He said, saddle my donkey. I'm go. Come on. Right? And she, she wasn't talking to, she, the, the, the prophet saw her coming. He sent his worker, go out and see what's going on. He wasn't talking to the, the, the worker. No, 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 no. I'm going to the prophet. Forget you. Now, you're, you, I, know, I know you are fine. Come on. But I want to see the man of God. Right? And Elijah, you see what his movement was? He ran. Right? And he lay on that boy. Three times. The first time he didn't come back to life. He had to do it three times before that kid came back to life. But that was an opportunity for God to show off. You could state that as a stress and says, well, life ain't fear. Look what God gave me and look what the devil did. He stole it and he died. Stress is an opportunity. Come on, let's start looking at it as an opportunity. Oh, I can't stand this anymore. Oh, my gosh. My head hurt because of all of that. Da, 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 da. No. You call God on it. You say, God, you are able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that I can even ask or think or imagine. I need healing in my body. Woo. Come on. He wants to already. Let's just give it to him. He's able. Stand with me. Thank you, Jesus. Hebrews chapter 12 and verse 2 says that we ought to set our eyes on him. Why? Because he's the author and the finisher of our faith. Amen. Let's set our eyes on the one that is true. Let's set our eyes on the one that is able. Let's set our eyes on the one that can make or break us. Let's set our eyes on him. Take your eyes off the things of the world. Don't go off, try to be happy. Go off, try to be with God. 
Be fulfilled in God and he will direct our path. Hallelujah.